Grief is such a difficult topic to start with and you don't know what backgrounds they're coming from, what they're dealing with, what stage they're at, how raw it is for them. We kind of had to, I suppose, build the relationships in the group as well and, and get to know everybody a little and where everybody was coming from. A lot of people think of art and they need to say, oh, can't draw, can't do any of that. So we've thought of ways around that. So producing the, the, the mandala with some leaves and flowers, those kinds of things which people can just, just float into and they don't realize they're working away, but they have a chance for their brains to sort of detach and then they talk. It is a vehicle more than a, a project in itself. So the art is a vehicle by which you get people to talk and open up. First day I said, oh my God, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> I, um, I thought, oh, I'm, I, I, I can't do art. I never did art. But once I got into it and the girls were lovely, Nancy and Tara made us feel at home, a sacred space that, that people can share. Because of my background in photography, I thought using photos would be like a really good talking point. So we gathered kind of photos from newspapers of just completely random things, laid them out on the table, and each week the participants come in and they pick a photo that resonates with them. It usually triggers a memory, is usually what happens, and it's a memory of a loved one, even if it's kind of subconscious. Normally then that opens a discussion. You don't have to open your mouth, you don't have to tell anything, you can only be here listening. I love it. I really love to learn to understand how other people deal with it. It's not about having these beautiful art pieces and if you do that's fantastic but that's not the goal. Um, even like sometimes some of the participants will have put the stuff in the bin when they finished and they're quite they feel quite powerful doing that. Maybe it's the camaraderie and maybe it's the humour because I think I believe humour can be very healing as well. So over the weeks, people have opened up more and more, more of their story has, has um, evolved. And even with the facilitators, we've been part of that group because we've also had bereavements. It's got me to open up about grief in front of complete strangers, which is, uh, which is quite kind of strange thing to do um, because I felt that if I didn't tell them where I was coming from, then I couldn't expect them to share their stories either. So um, I suppose that's something new for me as well. It's hugely powerful, you know, sometimes we think we have to keep a mask if everything is okay. No, if you show that things aren't perfect, you actually invite other people to share. And that's so powerful, but for your own healing, for the other person. The health service has realized that it's very important for people to be connected, to have opportunities for making meaning together. So when you put those two things together, what you get is arts and health. Um, it's a very new way of working, um, but it has been proven through research internationally and nationally that it is beneficial for participants. The Compassionate Culture Network is running very successfully in other parts of Ireland, but this was the first time it was going to be run in Kerry. It really has been like a kind of transformative project, if that, if that makes sense. The first week, uh, there was one lady that turned up, so <laughs> to, to go from that to the, the group not wanting it to end is fantastic, definitely.